Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another Render Man tutorial. Today we're going to be using a Pixar Surface and a Voronoise to create a procedural tile and cobblestone style texture and shader. Um, this is pretty straightforward, so let's get into it. First, we're going to start off by creating a polyplane and increasing its size to 24 by 24. So if you're working uh, on this and you want to do it the exact same way that I am, make sure you're using the same scale that I'm, I am, otherwise your results are going to be a little bit different. Um, the Voronoi's procedural shader is dependent on world space size. So next we're going to just drop in a light and we'll just put it up on a sort of 45 degree, degree angle here and actually I'll keep that pretty small that way we'll get some nice sharp shadows. Um, next thing we're going to do is assign a Pixar surface shader to it. We'll just call this cobble, but I might make it into a couple of other things as well. Then we're going to bring up the Hypershade Editor and map that out. So we'll hit tab and create a Voronoise, Pixar Voronoise, hit 3 on that and that will expand. We'll run the result RGB into the diffuse color to start with. And then we're going to bring our octaves down to one. This is going to give us some very simple geometry. I'll just set our gain to one as well. And I'll actually bring up the IPR so we can see what's happening as we make these changes. Okay, so I've just got the attributes here in the attribute editor. I'm just going to actually increase the value of that light. All right, so now if we increase the frequency, we'll start to see the pattern come in. Um, obviously this doesn't look anything like tiles at the moment so what we want to do is reduce the smoothness down that will square it all out and you see they get these random valued squares um, so what the smoothness will do for us is blur the edges a little bit and this can be useful if we're using a bump or displacement map just for the moment though we're going to keep it at a value of zero we can also use turbulent and you'll see that actually creates some dark lines in between some of the tiles which can be useful Jitter will offset them and you can see how this is starting to look a little bit like cobblestone. So if you combine the two, now you can see how you could use these dark areas as um, negative displacement or just zero displacement. Now if we were to add in octaves or just increase that to six, you won't see much of a difference until you increase or decrease the lacinarity. And that's just the repeat repetition of the pattern over the top of itself. So you can sort of see what it's doing there. But we're going to keep that at one and one. And then we'll just bring this down to be a bit more square. Okay, so I'm just going to bring up the hyper shade again so we can get a better idea of what's happening in the shading network. We'll create a Pixar, Pixar bump and run the result F into the um, input bump and then run the result N into the bump normal. And then now you can see we're getting these nice cast shadows. They're probably a bit intense at the moment. We probably want to go down to maybe 0.05 five I think is going to be a good value and then we can actually see the difference that having the smoothness increase does so as you increase that you can see that shadow blows out a bit you could actually put a PXR remap in between those two nodes if you wish we'll just use the RGB and then run the result RGBR into the input bump and then say we could change the gain or change the bias. So the bias makes it sort of quick control to bias it towards a more brighter color or more darker color and obviously the way that will affect the bump. The output minimum we could increase so we get less bump and the output max we could decrease so we get um, less overall um, extrusion. So the output minimal, the increasing that will reduce the amount that's insetting it in itself. But we're just going to use the um, result F directly into a bump and then control the bump with the um, bump map. We might use 0.01 for now. So obviously you could, instead of using the diffuse, uh, plug that, plugging that into the diffuse color, you could just go and use a straight color. Not very interesting though. It would be better if we could get some random color on each of our tiles. We can do this with a ramp, Pixar ramp. We'll run the result F into this spline map. And basically what that is doing is telling the ramp that if the input is zero, the color will be at this position here. And if the input is one, the color will be at this position here and then anything in between. So if we run the result RGB into the diffuse color and we change it to be a 
constant that way we'll just get solid colors and I've just picked some Mediterranean colors to sort of show you here so at the very bottom we might want to use a dark color because it'll be the inset colors and then we can just continue to add in more colors and move the ramp around to get the desired result so that's not looking too bad what I don't like is these very dark brown squares so I'm just gonna bring those up and desaturate them a little bit all right there you go so when you're not using them for a super close-up obviously it does look a little bit better so you've got a nice little sort of tile floor tile thing happening there or you could use it as a splash back for a kitchen um, obviously you just need to add in a bit of specularity for that so just a little bit of the face color and touch of roughness and you get a pretty effective result there now and so far as cobblestones go uh, what you can do with the Voronoi's is we could just increase the smoothness maybe maybe to a 0.18 and then what we'll do is increase the jitter and that's going to sort of randomize the shape of our tiles and then we need to decide whether or not if we want the tiles to be sort of smoothed out a lot or pretty defined probably somewhere around 0.1 ish looks good and you can see that this would be a really good method for just dropping down some uh, you know a street texture um, where you don't want to spend a bunch of time UVing and and you know texturing a whole street could be a quick way to do it and then over the top of it if you wanted some random dirt we could just create a pixar fractal I'll just run the result diffuse color in there and we'll sort of mess around with that a little bit to get some random values there you go that looks kind of dusty now Maya is doing its best to crash today so forgive me if everything starts wiggling around all over the place um, it is not me doing it so we'll, what we'll do is we'll use this fractal color to multiply by our ramp so we'll do this with our PXR blend and that will just allow us to run the result RGB into the top from the fractal and then the result RGB of the tiles into the bottom and then we'll just set the operation to multiply and run the result RGB into the diffuse color and then you get that sort of thing happening and we can just blend out the top color which is the dirt a little bit and there we go so we get a little bit more variation in the spec in the um, in the surface so you can tell it looks obviously it doesn't look super realistic when you're looking up close but from a distance you can see with a little bit of varied um, value in those colors it does make it look look a little bit more interesting and we just reintroduce some specularity and some roughness and then if you want more or less tiles you just need to change the frequency so for less tiles you'd reduce the number and for more tiles you would increase it and finally if you want a little bit more displacement obviously we could use a displacement here we'll just use a displace pxr displace and run the result out color into the displacement shader and run the result f from our voronoise into the displacement scalar scalar mean it's only going to be going up and down and then if we just reduce the value of the gain on our displace to 0.1 and notice that that is much too high maybe a value of 0.002 just to get a bit of variation there and we probably need to work on the specularity a little bit there and i would say it's probably best to keep the bump map on um, if you rely just solely on your displacement for the bumping it may be okay if you increase it but i think overall you're going to have a better result if you have both on so you can see that that looks pretty cool um, gives it a nice effect and like i said if it's for set dressing this is a really quick method to do it but it works really well and um, you can obviously use different scales of fractals versus um, versus your voronois and it'll just allow you to make nice textures for your backgrounds and your um, scenes very easily that's it for this tutorial if you found it useful make sure you leave a like so other people can find it and if you haven't already make sure you subscribe as we're bringing out cg and illustration tutorials every week just like this one become a patron and access tutorial assets bonus content a private discord and more by clicking the link below